to the Packers, barely come up short, losing to the Steelers 23-19. to Jordan Love had Jordan Love and this Packers offense had two separate drives at the end there where they had a chance to potentially come in, get a lead with the second drive. And the final drive could have won the game there with uh, you know one final play remaining. Unfortunately, Jordan Love throws an interception. But I honestly think there are lots of positives to take away from this game for Jordan Love, for this Packers offense. Obviously, we lost the game. It was a close one. It's unfortunate to get so close and come up with a loss because the Packers definitely had a lot of different opportunities to win this game. And they just couldn't. They just couldn't come away with it. This is a Pittsburgh Steelers team that has consistently shown that when it comes down to the fourth quarter, very close games, they found a way to win, which is why they are now six and three. But honestly, I have lots of um, you know confidence in what the Packers offense showed today, even though it wasn't perfect. There are so many things that I think were big strides forward for this team, and honestly, a good sign looking forward. The biggest issue in this game was the Packers' run defense. Got absolutely gashed by the Steelers' rushing attack. Allowed 205 yards on 5.7 yards per carry, so that was not um, you know not what you wanted to see. The Packers' defense against Kenny Pickett, Kenny Pickett barely did anything. 14 of 23, 126 yards, no touchdowns, no interceptions. So it was mainly the running game that kept, kept this Pittsburgh Steelers' defense alive. And so the Packers' rushing defense that played really well the past two weeks um, had a really, really poor game, which happened has happened a lot for this team for you know a majority of the season so far. Now I want to look at the Packers offense and Jordan Love. And if you just look at Jordan Love's stats, 21 of 40, 289 yards, two touchdowns, two interceptions, a 71.8 rating. I honestly don't think it does justice to the kind of game this was for Jordan Love because one of the biggest critiques on Love this season, and rightfully so, has been his inability to you know, throw accurate deep balls. And there were countless balls in this game where Jordan Love let it rip 20 plus yards multiple times. And, you know, he, he had it right on the money. There was two, two plays um, before he throws the first interception, which honestly wasn't a terrible throw. It was mainly a great play by the defender who tips it. The other Steelers defender intercepts it. But on that series with five minutes left in the fourth quarter, he throws a beautiful, beautiful pass to uh, Luke Musgrave down the right side. And then a 32-yard pass to Jaden Reed, or no, sorry, to Dontavian Wicks on third and 10. Two great plays from Jordan Love on that series. And then on the final series, that one play to Jaden Reed, I think it was like a 46-yard pass. He's falling away, getting hit, and he puts a beautiful like 46-yard ball to Jaden Reed. Um, you also look at the 35-yard touchdown pass to Jaden Reed in the first half. And I think that was one area in this game where Jordan Love took a huge stride forward as he was consistently throwing very accurate deep passes, which if we can see that improvement continue, then Jordan Love is going to be fine as a quarterback. And honestly, um, this is, I think, uh, we saw last week, he had a pretty solid, efficient game. Not a ton of deep balls, a, a couple of misses last week, but this game, he was chunking it down the field, pretty accurate, and was playing pretty well. And I think there are lots of passes in this game that were dropped. So while his completion percentage doesn't look great, there were a good amount of drop passes in my opinion. Not that every pass he threw was perfect, but that was the biggest takeaway for me is just honestly um, the improvements we saw from Jordan Love in this game. And I get, you know, those two interceptions, if you look at the two picks he threw, as I said, the first one, it wasn't that bad in my opinion. It, was, it wasn't it was a terribly placed ball. Um, Christian Watson, I mean, he was close to it. The defender just tipped it, you know, and right to it, the Steelers defender. And the final one, the Steelers lined up like six or seven of their guys at the goal line, which, I mean, Jordan Love had to throw it to the end zone there, and so maybe it wasn't a great decision, but still, um, those interceptions weren't that bad in my opinion. In one area where the Packers really excelled last week that I think really opened things up for Jordan Love in this Packers offense was the rushing attack, and if you initially look at the numbers, they're pretty good today, 24 carries, 116 yards, 4.8 yards per carry, but honestly, outside of one really big run by A.J. Dillon, the Packers rushing attack wasn't very good today. A.J. Dillon had a 40-yard run. But if you take away that 140-yard run, the rest of the carries averaged 3.3 yards per carry. So outside of that one explosive run, the Packers rushing attack did not have as much success as we did last week. And so while that's obviously something that you don't want to see, Aaron Jones only had 13 carries, 35 yards, 2.7 yards a carry. The positive from that is that even though the Packers rushing attack wasn't really doing a ton of damage in this game outside of that one run, Jordan Love was still able to find success in the passing game. And so I think that early in the season when the Packers were sort of stuck and had to pass, the Packers really couldn't get it done. And then in in last week we saw when they get the run game going, it sort of opens a little bit in the passing game, obviously. Um, But this week, even though the running game wasn't great, Jordan Love played well, which is promising that in the future, if the Packers 
have to pass the ball. I mean, they may be able to find more success. And one other promising thing until we get to the not so great side um, of the Packers defense in this game. Um, but Jaden Reed, five receptions, 84 yards, led the team. So to see a rookie like him continue to take strides forward and build that chemistry with Love with a beautiful touchdown catch, another really nice catch, 46 yarder from Love, as we already talked about. Then Luke Musgrave had two big plays, two receptions, 64 yards. And so to see him sort of becoming more of a deep threat, making those plays, connecting with Jordan Love, promising. And then Dontavian Wicks, three receptions, 51 yards. He's coming into his own. And so three rookies led the Packers receivers and the two second year guys, Romeo Dobbs, only three receptions, 31 yards, had a nice, really nice touchdown catch. And then Christian Watson, two receptions, 23 yards. I think those are both in the first drive. Outside of that, Watson didn't play great. He had a, I know one big drop um, and didn't really do too much the rest of the game. And so Jaden Reed and Wicks definitely outplayed both Romeo Dobbs and Christian Watson. So at least these rookies are really taking strides forward, which is promising for the future of this Packers offense. And now if we move to the Packers defense, the the first half was definitely worse than the second half in the sense that the Steelers, both of their two offensive touchdowns or two touchdowns on offense were in the first half. Uh, they scored 17 points in the first half overall. And so the rest of the game, the Packers only held the Steelers to two field goals in the second half. So that's pretty solid um, from that perspective. But still, when you look at the total rushing yards for the Steelers at 36 carries for 205 yards, it's just not great because... The Steelers rushing attack so far this season, they were somewhere in the 20s coming into this game. They played well last week and today. The Packers, I mean, had no answer to stop the run. 5.7 yards per carry. Jalen Warren had 15 carries, 101 yards, 6.7 yards a carry. Najee Harris, 16 carries, 82 yards, 5.1 yards a carry. And that's just an area of the Packers defense that has consistently been bad for years and years. And it hasn't been fixed up to this point. And as I said, the Packers have had two solid rushing game or solid run defense games the past two games against, you know, not great rushing attacks. And this isn't even a great rushing attack. They've been better the past two weeks, but still to allow 205 yards to this team, um, you know, not great for this Packers defense. And, you know, the bright side for this Packers defense is the fact that, you know, even though we really allowed two touchdowns in the first half, we held that together and at least held them to field goals. So, um, I think the, the defense did enough in the second half to keep the Packers in this game. They gave the offense some opportunities to score, but still, you can't really have that going forward um, if we want to have any success in the future. If you know subpar teams are able to just gash us on the ground, as the Steelers did today, so uh, there were some injuries. Of course, Jair was out as well as uh, Quay Walker, but the passing attack of the Steelers didn't really do too much. As I said, 126 yards for Kenny Pickett, and so even though we were without. Jair, of course, Rasul got traded in the past few weeks. Uh, Bal- uh, Corey Val- uh, Carrington Valentine played pretty well, as well as Corey Valentine. Those two names always get uh, switched up in my brain sometimes. They're so similar. Um, but they played pretty well. The leading receiver was George Pickens, three receptions for 45 yards. And I think Isaiah McDuffie has done a really good job as the fill-in for Quay Walker. He tied the Packers for tackles uh, with Rudy Ford at 10. And so all in all, you know, definitely lots to clean up, especially in the defense when it comes to the rushing defense. And I do just wonder about Joe Barry. Obviously, the conversation is always about him as a defensive coordinator um, and, you know, consistently allowing teams to run for over 200 yards. I know the Falcons did it. I'm pretty sure the Lions did it. The Broncos got to like 150 to 170, somewhere around there. So um, I, I don't know why, you know, that consistently happens. We can't stop the run. And that needs to be fixed if this Packers team going forward wants to you know, be able to consistently be competitive. Uh, So that's obviously an issue. But honestly, my biggest takeaway is the fact that lots of promising signs from Jordan Love that gives me confidence that if we just give Love in this offense some time, these young players some time, they're going to keep taking strides forward. And even though we couldn't come up with it, even though we went one for five in the red zone, which is not great. This is a good Steelers defense who does pretty solid in the red zone. There were honestly, in my mind, more promising things than, you know, not promising things. Just with Jaden Reed's play, Luke Musgrave, Wicks, Jordan Love hitting on those deep passes. So lots to look forward to going forward, in my opinion. But those are my thoughts. Thank you guys for watching, as always. I'll be out with more videos this week, and I'll see you guys next time. 